chilliest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching! <laughs> this is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science, storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is... Hi, I'm Abby, and I work for Festival Bridge as Education Programme Manager, and I used to be a primary school teacher in early years in Key Stage 1. Hi, I'm Rob, I work in Key Stage 2 in a school in Buckinghamshire near Milton Keynes. And today we are exploring learning outcomes in design and technology with a spine-tingling story from Scotland. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for Scottish Skeleton. That's not the title of the story, by the way. That's just the easiest way to find it. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you're an epic educator, as of 14th of October 2022, you'll also get the story as a paperback, eerily illustrated by Corky Paul, no stranger to spooky tales himself, in time for you to use for Halloween 2022. Don't worry if you missed that, though, as you can also order the book from any bookshop, including Amazon, and Epic Educators can access the ebook and full audiobook through the Epic Tales app. In fact, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's signed up to be an Epic Educator so far, because by doing so, you are also supporting this podcast so we can keep sharing these off the shelf lesson ideas every week. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Abby and Rob. And at some point last week, Rob mentioned recipes, but I mm. gather you are the one who is wanting to explore culinary art forms with your young learners, Abby, ages four to seven. Well, since last week, I've, I've really been thinking about developing a, a sort of D&T carousel. So got a Ooh, number okay. of a number of things going on. So we are set in Scotland in this story. So hmm. I definitely want to have an opportunity for children to make some traditional Scottish food. So make and try haggis or just taste it. Maybe mm -hmm. make a cranachan, which probably would be a bit easier on the palate for, for some young children. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got a couple of uh, traditional dishes there. But you're not going to be doing that with your whole class. So some of the other things that you could have going on at the same time would be nice to have the opportunity. It's Halloween. Everyone's going to be pumpkin carving. It's not the easiest thing to do uh, in a school setting, particularly with young children. So a bit of pumpkin mm. painting and oh. either painting Cold Johnny or uh, one of the gravestones or helping create some props for my PE thoughts for later on in the week. And um, so that that's one part of the carousel. I'm trying to link everything together this time. <laughs> um, and then another one, I, I keep coming back with this story to, to the opportunities for creativity, hmm. for saying to young people, yeah, we're going to give you space to be creative. So uh, I also thought it would be great if they had the opportunity to design their own graveyard. So oh. they've got to design it. So they've got to uh, think about the layout. How mm. many tombstones are they going to have? How are they clustered? Are they going to have a path through it? Where is the guardian going to be? Where is the easiest place for them to guard the graveyard? Is it at a gate? They can really think out their design and, and talk through it. Yeah. You could have a competition. They could actually make these with real outside materials like moss and stones, things like that. So it's quite malleable and create these mini gardens and have a display, uh, make some spooky creatures to go in it. But there is that design element and being able yeah. to explain, this is why my graveyard is laid out this way. This is what I've gone for. You could do this whole carousel with pumpkins, actually, couldn't you? Because you could do the, the painting on one side of a pumpkin. You could maybe chop your pumpkin in half and use the other side for carving. You could use the stalk for your stones and you could use the insides, the flesh for, well, recipes. I mean, it's Well, you're really going to give them to Rob and his class to make the soup. So they're, <laughs> oh, they're going to be sorted. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be no waste at all. <laughs> Let's move on up to ages 7 to 11 and see what Rob is going to do with his young learners then. Uh, aside from eating pumpkin soup, we <laughs> are going to have a look at some of the 
jobs that the lad had to do and think of ways that they could be made easier for him so hmm. to create different kinds of tools or apparatus to help the lad to complete those jobs and in my head i'm kind of seeing like a wallace and gromit style <laughs> of invention that they create mm. so i would say to my class you're going to create a tool to help the lad do the jobs or depending on how well i knew my class i'd either say you've got to do one of the jobs or i'd say you can choose which one you do mm. and then look at different designs i would show them some clips of wallace and gromit's inventions to generate yeah. some ideas and then i would say okay go and have a look see what what you'd need to do it we would probably build a prototype and we'd do that in school so you, you use your junk modeling to do that rather than saying okay well, i need to go out and buy 38 whisks or whatever it is <laughs> that they decide yeah. they need but then also think about how is it going to be aesthetically useful so is it going to have comfortable hand grips is it going to have like a, a hand with a handkerchief that wipes the sweat off his brow as he's going <laughs> how many cup holders is it going to have key question when you're looking at things <laughs> definitely <laughs> just thinking of the sources you've cited and the time of year we're exploring would you let them watch the curse of the were rabbit as uh, mm. some inspiration yeah nice. yeah i would, probably not the whole thing but i would pick and choose pick the, the bits with inventions yeah, yeah. oh yeah. chip i thought you were heading into santa's workshop i thought you were heading right to christmas and <laughs> getting them actually to uh, be really creative with their inventions <laughs> <laughs> It'd be sort of like the nightmare before Christmas, yeah. really, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Getting all our film uh, notes in today. <laughs> yeah, and, and perhaps you could even start working between the year groups in your school so that your ages 7 to 11 are thinking of what tools they could use to help ages 4 to 7 with their design carousel. I mean, you might want a tool to chop up the pumpkins, tools to carve the pumpkins, maybe even tools to paint the pumpkins i think that would be good because quite often some children they can have the ideas but getting it down on paper and realizing it in a yeah. physical form is quite tricky so if you can say oh we need something that's going to help younger children to chop the pumpkin up then it's more realistic to them almost mm. Mm, and what yes. i like about that rob is you've got a, a dt fiction and then you can have a DT nonfiction. You can you can yeah. have a let's create a really outlandish. We probably don't have the facilities to create this amazing machine. And wow, wouldn't it be? But that's yeah. real creativity. But then you could have a real let's think of something that is going to fix a much simpler problem that happens in the classroom every day and actually is something that we know we need a paper clip for this or we need a what are they called when they hold you a stack of paper down? Paperweight. A paperweight. Mm. Yeah. So I don't yeah, know. Yeah. It's something that you know is a, is an issue in your classroom and they have to yeah. think through a, re a real life design. Or even thinking about what Chip was saying. So helping with the, like the cooking, for example, I've got in my head, mm. if you're cutting pasta, you can get like, they're like pizza cutters, but they're all connected. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen those. So yeah. you can cut multiple bits of pasta at once. <laughs> how, Amazing, how you made yeah. pasta this is. So you could yes. create like a, a multi-knife chopper. So it does lots of bits all at the same time. Yeah, I think yeah. linking the cooking to the inventing is a really good idea because there's all kinds of design for kitchen tools, isn't there? Mm. Graters and lots of different things. So, yeah, that's a, a nice way to get them inventing something real. Well, I'm glad you both like that idea because, to be honest, I, I actually just thought it was a tenuous link. I wanted to make sure I could mention pumpkins so that I could squash an extra joke Wait. into this podcast <laughs> before we got to the end. <laughs> Sorry. That's my job. <laughs> That's all we have time for in this episode, folks. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world, so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable, and enjoyable all at the same time. Tomorrow, call Johnny and the laddie will help us teach geography and modern foreign languages. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio! cheerio.
and we hope to hear your story soon. <laughs>